All right. I'm going to show you a couple of little random things here that we're doing. One is we took the uh, coupler and we installed the uh, pilot shaft bushing. On this one, we're only going with the uh, bushing. We're not using the uh, needle bearing. We could have machined it to, to fit that, but it's really not necessary in these type of applications because we're not really using the clutch that much. And so an impregnated bronze bushing works just fine. So we took and heated our um, coupler a little bit. Doesn't have to be that hot. And we uh, chilled the bronze bushing a little bit. It's a, a pressed fit. And we simply just put them together. We had the bushing made to be the right depth so that when we put this on the shaft, the shaft just comes up against this bushing, so it can't go forward. And of course, once we put the flywheel on, it can't come out either. So anyway, we'll install this shortly. But right now, we're going to be working on the uh, vacuum pump. Vacuum pump is uh, shock mounted. It's going to go in place. Actually, it'll fit in the vehicle with the motor and the uh, uh, fitting pointing out of the hole that we're going to install it in. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, the barbed fitting is what I meant to say. So anyway, let's go take a look at that. All right. There's the hole. This is on the driver's side of the vehicle. And we've got the holes punched and a little pilot hole drilled. I still have to drill the uh, full size hole. But basically, this is going to fit right back in like this. And so our plumbing will come out here and over to our and pressure switch, so forth. The vacuum takeoff for the vehicle is actually right over here. See if it'll show up on camera. Oh, it's black against black in here. But this is the end of the um, vacuum line that runs up front. The vacuum booster is actually underneath the dash, and so we will attach to the uh, plumbing that's already in the vehicle. So we're only going to go from the pump to there. Nice little short run. So let's install that and we'll show it to you. Wow, nice good shock mount. Right here, this is where the rear engine cross member goes across for the uh, rear engine mount. And because our setup is going to be longer, we need to move that mount rearward. rearward. And fortunately, we have a flange here just like we do here, and we're going to move this back. And it'll fit right back in here, and that'll give us the extra length that we need for mounting our, our rear mount on the motor. So let's go take a look at what it looks like on the top side. Well, I'll tell you what, while we're here, let's take a look at the, the bottom of the vehicle. Here's a new transaxle in place. Basically, it's, it's got uh, larger, heavier mounts for the uh, constant velocity joints. 
constant velocity joints are larger. Um, they're out of a Porsche. And so uh, it's just a heavier duty setup. This is what the uh, owner of the vehicle wanted. So we've installed that. The uh, shafts haven't been put in place yet. That's coming up tomorrow. So here's the uh, shift linkage. Not yet installed. But the bottom side here is pretty pretty free and open. There's just you know some cabling here, throttle tube for the throttle cable, line for the brakes, shift linkage. When we get it up in this area, this is where the uh, fuel tank was. The fuel tank hung down here. And uh, here's the back of the tank. And here's where the front of the tank was. So the tank's been removed. Don't really gain any room with the tank being gone. But you do gain uh, some uh, lightening of the vehicle. And that's what we wanted. This went to the uh, fuel sending unit that'll be removed. Let's take a look at the front here. This is with the spare tire removed. The spare tire occupies this space here. That's the shift linkage in the black box there. But the spare tire takes up this whole area. And these wire looking pieces right here, one on each side, those are actually the upper um, spare tire uh, support pieces or they keep it from bouncing around and so here's the other end of our vacuum line right here this is the throttle coming in here this is the vacuum line that we're going to attach to in the rear it comes up here also let's take a look right here this is the hole in the front of the vehicle right here. We've had moved the grill to get the uh, radiator out. So with the radiator not in place, here's the uh, lines to the heater core. This one has the valve on it right there. Let me see if I can get some more light. So there's the heater lines, the one with the valve, the other one will probably shorten the other one there. But off to the side here, there's a, an area where we're going to mount our heater reservoir. And so all of our heater components will be going right in this area where the uh, radiator was. And there will be a piece of black ABS behind the grill blocking airflow so as to not cool down any of our heating uh, components, the uh, little heated reservoir and so forth. So those components are over here. Here's the pump that will be used for that and the heater. And so there's a, a couple of uh, contactors. We run one for each element. So we kind of have a, a, a low and high kind of a situation. This is our thermostat right there, which will control our, will be in series with our switch to turn on our heating elements or contactors. So this will fit right about like this on the other side of the body sheet metal here. So we'll work real well. 
Uh, the heater core sits kind of high in here, so we're going to attach to the line inside the passenger compartment and uh, put our fill port there so as to have that at the highest point, have a bleed and a fill that's higher than everything else. So the heater core is back up in there. This is the shop of the lower dash with the glove box removed. And so that's where the heater fill will go. Um, and then uh, the pump will be at the lowest point in the system. It'll go below our, our uh, reservoir and heater. But, and it will be mounted right here. We're going to use this existing hole on the little frame member there. Be out of the way of the spare tire. And below where we're going to be mounting our reservoir. So the pump needs to be the lowest point in the system. And your fill needs to be at the highest. That's going to be where we um, bleed the air out of the system. And so there's where we'll attach to the stock plumbing. Short runs, nice and easy, out of the way. And yet for servicing, simply remove the grill. Components will be right there, or you can get to them from underneath the vehicle. So one thing we always take into account when we do a conversion is the serviceability. Don't want to build it so that if you did have an issue that it was going to be problematic to uh, to repair so here's our vacuum pump in place here's where our vacuum line will come out right there here's our electrical connection right there the thing is nicely shock mounted won't transfer any any noise to the vehicle. These pumps are very, very quiet. They uh, they run up fast. So, and this, of course, is the furthest point from the driver. He'll never know it's it's doing its job. So next, we'll mount the tank. Instead of mounting the tank back in here, we're just going to mount it right here. There's plenty of room in this engine bay here, and we're going to mount the tank there. And we always uh, put a little gauge on there so by mounting the tank out here it allows us one using existing mounting holes and two uh, we can easily see our gauge so let's do that now here's the vacuum brake setup installed plumbed but not wired you have a gauge Here's our vacuum pump. Line comes from the vacuum pump to the tank through a one-way valve. So we can draw vacuum out of the tank, but it won't allow air back in. We leave the tank here, go through another one-way valve. Again, it's drawing from the booster to the tank but won't allow it to go the other way and there's our vacuum switch it says it's not wired up yet but that will maintain the pressure in the system and here's where it attaches to the stock vacuum setup so we're still working on the wiring in the vehicle we have a lot of existing wiring to clean up and get out of the way. We've established from the um, starting motor our unswitched 12 volts. We now need to install a um, connection point there, bus bar. And that's where we'll get our 12 volts unswitched and then we'll 
set up a spot with a uh, fuse block for our switched 12 volt accessories in the back here. Here's our new axles with the uh, oversized constant velocity joints as well as our axle stub. You can see, well this one not very well, from this side you can see how they took the stock axle and they welded a piece onto it and then drilled and tapped some new holes for a new larger oversized bolt. So tomorrow, hopefully, we'll get these installed. This is uh, what the replacement bolt looked like. Larger diameter than the original. So anyway. You can see how they're the extra diameter piece was welded on. I'm assuming they're well balanced. So, when all is said and done, the vacuum brake setup is on one side of the engine bay, motor bay, and on the other side will be the power steering. Uh, we're still waiting for the motor to come in and we'll decide how that's going to lay out. It will be in that right rear corner. We may or may not keep the stock bracket. kind of don't like it where it is. We may remove that and locate it somewhere else. But we'll just have to see how our hoses work out. So that's uh, the vacuum brake setup. Well, here's our reconditioned transaxle in place, along with our chromoly axle shafts and uh, the new Porsche 930 turbo CV joints. New outer shafts were installed also. The linkage isn't hooked up yet. Uh, we just received word uh, a couple days ago that the owner has ordered a cable shifting mechanism. So we'll be replacing the current uh, rod linkage system with a new cable activated system. Hopefully to make the shifting easier and more uh, positive. A lot of uh, slop in these uh, stock setups. So anyway, we also have a new clutch master and slave cylinders to install, um, new flexible line to the slave cylinder. So that's not in yet, but what we want to do next, now the transaxle is in place uh, with new throw out bearing so forth, um, we're going to be installing the motor. So that's what's going in next. There's our motor with the uh, adapter coupler we showed you before along with uh, new clutch components. So let's put that thing in place. Here she is going in. We're just a fraction of an inch from mating up. Time to slide our bolts into place.
and as you can see we have plenty of room between the end of the motor and the end of the uh, engine compartment here. So this is a nice fit. So let's uh, take her the rest of the way in. All right, the motor's in place. Note that we use a transmission jack and we have a little cradle that supports the motor, keeps it from rolling. And I like to use a transmission jack because it allows us to cradle the motor versus a, a floor jack and it allows us to articulate that platform and get the right angle so that the motor and trans axle or transmission line up just perfectly and so here it is mounted together so we still have to uh, install our rear mount it's not going to be as symmetrically beautiful the way I would like in that the holes for attaching to the uh, rear face of the motor are not uh, in the position that I would really like. In other words this one on the left and the one on the right are not um, parallel to the ground when you run a straight edge through them. And the one at the bottom here is, is not at the 6 o'clock position. Same way here, this top one. But that's the uh, way that uh, mounting the adapter to the motor, that's as close to getting these to the top as we could get. They'd be, um, you know, one direction or another further over here's the other hole so it would be here so they would either be off this way or off this way so it is what it is but we will now reuse the uh, stock cross member and use that for uh, our rear motor mount um, as well as uh, some shock mounts that will go in there anyway. We'll show you that uh, perhaps tomorrow. It's late today, so calling it a day. So it'll sit on the jack tonight. But anyway, once we have that rear uh, mount uh, incorporated, then we can move on to the uh, battery rack which we've shown you before it's constructed just needs to be uh, put in place and a few uh, notes taken as where we're going to run wiring and place other things in that same little compartment and once that is done then we will paint everything and make that battery rack look nice. Same with our motor mounts, all that will be cleaned and painted. But we don't do that until after we've had a chance to do all of our design work and tweak and make sure it's just the way we want it. So I'll let you see a little bit of the room that's in there. I haven't decided we're going to mount a few items but the back of this slopes away. Let me see if we can get better. Better lighting from this side. But anyway, this is the rear facing piece and it uh, slopes away from 
the floor there. So once our battery rack is in place, and it's going to go here, it's the furthest back. So we have some room there to put something that um, we don't ever intend to have to <laughs> deal with. Um, and maybe uh, the battery charger, uh, that's a good point. This is a weather tight enclosure, so this might be a, a good spot for that. Um, anything we put in here, once the battery rack is in place, uh, things would be, you know, less than easy to get to. So we really don't like being in that situation. But the uh, charger would be better served there than in uh, an engine compartment exposed to, uh, you know, potential elements. So, this is where we are currently. So we still have to find homes for, um, like I said, the power steering will go in this corner. Exactly how it mounts is yet to be determined. Our motor should be in Monday. Uh, this is a Thursday. And we still have our controller to install, uh, the throttle, the controller cooling. So where we put all that, uh, we really haven't decided exactly on this one. We know generally where we're going to put uh, things, but the exact method of mounting and everything just hasn't been determined yet. Get the motor in, and then we'll clean up the uh, existing wiring. We're not going to cut out stuff that's not being used like we do a lot of times. Being that this is a fairly rare vehicle in North America, uh, only 18 is my understanding, that we're going to leave this so that if somebody ever wanted to convert it back to gas for whatever crazy reason, you could, uh, you could do it. So, that's it for right now. Well, we're putting the finishing touches on the rear motor mount. The uh, difficulty is, if you want to call it difficult, is getting the motor aligned so that it's properly aligned in this direction rotationally. And then we had to uh, align it vertically, you know, up and down uh, from the ground. And then also how it sits in the engine compartment left to right. So everything had to be uh, just right. And so we've got straps that were holding it in place, so forth. But let's see if we can get in and let you see how it's coming. So what we have is our stock cross member. This was the cross member from the factory. We simply relocated it back from where it was. The original factory location, you can see right there, was here. We've moved it back oh, about six inches. And then that cross member is now supporting an angle iron that's mounted to that, the stock member. And then that is then shock mounted. And again, they're black, so they don't show up very well. But you'll see there's three shock mounts that mount on top of that angle iron. And then another one is mounted on top of them. And then that one mounts to the motor in two positions. 
we're getting ready to drill the hole on the right side there. It's mounted on the motor. The strap on the shaft is just to keep the thing from sliding back to the left. Kind of wanted to go that way a little bit, so we kind of held it in position. Here's the view from the top. So like I said, these holes weren't horizontally across one another, which, you know, aesthetically looks a little better. But uh, that's just the way with the uh, um, adapter and so forth. That's just the way it turned out. So then, this is strapped from the motor down to this angle iron through a shock mount to another piece of angle iron which is bolted to the original cross member. Now these will be trimmed and uh, ground will round off the corners. Clean everything up. Of course it all has to be painted. We're just doing the fitment right now. But that's how this is uh, secured on the uh, back end. So it's a simple design, but very effective. It'll support the weight of the motor. It'll resist uh, rotational torque. And it's all shock mounted, so no vibration will transmit through our uh, mounting system to the body of the vehicle. And then of course there's the stock mount on the uh, front side of the transaxle. So there you have it. Here's our rear motor mount. So, next thing that we're going to rough in will be the um, battery rack. So that will be next. We got to get that fitted into place, strapped, bolted. Then we'll remove all these things and they'll go and be painted. Next order of business, we've got to put that in there. And that's only part of the picture. It's actually got to be a little more clearance than what is required by the battery rack itself as the cells will sit up a little higher. Actually they don't have the uh, ABS liner in at this time so it actually will sit 3 sixteenths of an inch taller than that. So let's see if we can put that in there and secure it in place. Well, battery rack's in place, the doors are closed. So let's uh, take a peek and see what it looks like inside. There she is. That's with the uh, battery rack and a couple batteries just to show how it looks in place. Give you a little more of a close up. Let me go open the other side and let a little light in. Okay. There it is with the uh, battery in place. To uh, be able to look through, you can see the clearance between the uh, bed support members. There's two of them, one on each side here. We've got 
this point to clear, we have these points to clear, we have the latch to clear, and so, but we have a lot of room between the back portion of this uh, treasure chest and where the battery rack goes. So we'll have plenty of room to put the charger probably in the center there there's a flat spot I think that's going to be the perfect mounting location so we've got clearance for our interconnects and so forth so it shouldn't be a problem so let's roll one of these out now they don't roll real easy without any weight in them but without loading batteries in there we'll try to get it to come out not all the way but pretty close so you can see that that will allow us to install and inspect ourselves and be able to put them back in when you're done and they're in a weather tight compartment. Notice the seal. So it's a real nice location for them. It's between the axles. It's as low in the vehicle as we can get. They're in a weather tight locked cabinet. So this is just just perfect. Take a look at the other side here. Again, same thing on driver's side. This is going to house a total of 38 cells. And so there will be two rows of 19. And so we'll have two rows of 9 on the driver's side, two rows of 10 on the passenger side. Real snug fit. We didn't have any extra room to put uh, anything more than 38 of the 180s in there would be would be tough. Like I said we do have some additional room in the back but you know Insulation and service would be a problem. And so this makes for a slick little setup, I think. So now just need to cut our straps, drill our holes, bolt it in place, and then we will uh, remove it and clean it up and paint it same thing that we're going to need to do to our motor mounting hardware that we installed yesterday. Beauty of this is it fits in there nice and low. You can't see the uh, mount from below or behind I should say, from behind the vehicle. There's the stock cross member is all that you'll see and this is a shot from bumper height so further we get from behind you're really not going to see anything the exhaust is what you saw before there was actually a heat shield and exhaust which hung down and so you didn't see the cross member in the gas incarnation so We keep on moving forward here, looking forward to mounting the 
power steering. Our motor comes in Monday, so we'll be making the bracket and mounting that. We've got a controller to mount, as well as a few other additional electronics. So, lots of room in this setup, which will make it nice and clean. Don't like these white uh, insulated covers right here, so we're going to take put black heat shrink on them, kind of make that disappear. Also, got to put some uh, loom over that. They uh, they go this far with it, and then they leave these wires exposed. So we'll take care of that also. Stay with us. Here's the view from the rear with both battery trays extended. See if we can get a shot from the front here without having to move the vehicle out. Shooting into the light. So once you're driving down the road, nobody will know it's electric even. These things will be hidden away. Just nice, clean, efficient vehicle.